Now, the French said they were going to help the Israelis, but both the Israelis and the French needed British support to provide air cover for the Israeli troops, since the Israeli Air Force was at that time too weak to combat Egypt's Russian-built aircraft. If Britain agreed, so the French emissaries said, Britain and France would have an excellent opportunity to reverse Nasser's nationalisation and perhaps even to overthrow his government. Now, in response to this, Eden visited Paris with his foreign secretary to consult French leaders and, on his return, spoke to his senior colleagues. Now, the foreign secretary was Selwyn Lloyd, and he, I think, was rather sceptical of the use of force. He wanted to continue with negotiation. But he was rather in awe of Anthony Eden, and he'd come to the Foreign Office by a rather curious route. Um, he was a very junior figure. And in 1951, he'd been made a junior minister at the Foreign Office, much to his surprise, by Churchill. He was expecting to have a position as a law officer because he'd been a shadow law officer in the late 1940s. And he, had, he, he assumed that would be his position. But Eden asked for him as a junior minister. And when Churchill said he was going to appoint him to the Foreign Office, Selwyn Lloyd said, but sir, I think there must be some mistake. I do not speak any foreign language. Except in war, I have never visited any foreign country. I do not like foreigners. <laughs> I have never spoken in a foreign affairs debate in the House. I have never listened to one. And Churchill replied, young man, these all seem to me to be positive advantages. <laughs> But given his position, he was very much in awe of Eden and was easily convinced by Eden. Now, after senior ministers were consulted, it was agreed that Selwyn Lloyd would go with an official incognito to France to meet the French and the Israelis secretly at a village in Sèvres, around 20 miles from Paris, at which the plans would be outlined. And that was on the 22nd of October. And the Foreign Secretary was told the Israelis proposed to attack in the Sinai Desert in a week's time on the 29th of October. The French suggested that they and the British should then issue an ultimatum requiring both Israeli and Egyptian forces to retreat 10 miles from the canal, the pretext being the safeguarding of the canal. Now, the Israelis would accept this ultimatum since it would be unlikely they would actually be within 10 miles of the canal, and that weren't, in fact while the Egyptians could hardly accept a proposal requiring them to withdraw from their own territory, which was under attack, and Britain and France would then invade. Would Britain agree? Selwyn Lloyd said he had to consult his cabinet, but according to an Israeli account, he insisted on the following, that the Israeli attack not be a small-scale encounter, but a real war. He said otherwise there would be no justification for the British ultimatum, and Britain would appear in the eyes of the world as an aggressor. The British said they had friends like the Scandinavian countries who would not view with favour Britain starting a war. And you may think this is an example of British hypocrisy to match anything the Americans had done. Now, uh, the Israelis said they would not attack Egypt unless they had a cast-iron guarantee from Britain that they would bomb Egyptian airfields because otherwise, they said, their ground troops would be attacked in the Sinai Desert by Egypt. So two days later, there was a second clandestine meeting at Sèvres, attended this time not by any ministers, but by two Foreign Office officials. And they initialed a document putting in writing the uh, discussion two days earlier. When they got back to London, Eden was furious. He said nothing should be put on paper. The British copy should be destroyed and the Foreign Office officials were told to go back to Paris to destroy the other copies as well. <laughs> now, on returning to the French Foreign Office, they were locked in a room for some time, and indeed unable to obtain their lunch, and then told there was no question of the French destroying their copy, because the Israelis had taken their copy back to Israel, and they wouldn't destroy it, because they didn't trust the British to actually bomb Egyptian airfields without the written agreement and the French couldn't agree to the Israelis having the only copy. So the British officials returned empty-handed, and the so-called Treaty of Sèvres, which intended to be secret, more accurately a protocol, it was first published by Israeli Chief of Staff Moshe Dayan in his memoirs in 1966, and then by the French Foreign Minister in his memoirs in 1976. 
The document now to be found in the British National Archives is in fact the Israeli version. The British one has been destroyed. But whether treaty or protocol, it was secret and intended to remain secret forever. 